members are going to be speaking at least part of their speech um, in Gaelic. So we certainly look forward to that. And we now come to decision time. There are five questions to be put as a result of today's business. Can I remind members that in relation to the debate on the EU referendum, if the amendment in the name of Claire Baker is agreed, the amendment in the name of Willie Rennie falls. The first question then is amendment number 13404.4 in the name of Claire Baker, which seeks to amend motion number 13404 in the name of Fiona Hislop on the EU referendum be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed. We move to vote. Members should cast their votes now. The result of the vote on amendment number 13404.4 in the name of Claire Baker is as follows. Yes, 38. No, 60. There were 19 abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed to. Can I remind members now that if the amendment in the name of Alex Johnson is agreed, the amendment in the name of Willie Rennie falls. The question then is that amendment number 13404.2 in the name of Alex Johnson, which seeks to amend motion number 13404 in the name of Fiona Hislop on the EU referendum be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Parliament's not agreed. We move to vote. Members should cast their votes now. The result of the vote on amendment number 13404.2 in the name of Alex Johnson is as follows. Yes, 14. No, 104. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed to. So, the next question is amendment number 13404.1 in the name of Willie Rennie, which seeks to amend motion number 13404 in the name of Fiona Hislop, on the EU referendum, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. Parliament's not agreed. We move to vote. Members should cast their votes now. The result of the vote on amendment number 13404.1 in the name of Willie Rennie is as follows. Yes, 50. No, 64. There were four abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed to. The next question is that motion number 13404 in the name of Fiona Hislop on the EU referendum be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. We move to vote. Members should cast their votes now.
with the result of the vote on motion number 13404 in the name of Fiona Hislop is as follows. Yes, 60. No, 18. There were 40 abstentions. The motion is therefore agreed to. The next question is at motion number 13384 in the name of Liam MacArthur. On the appointment of a member of the Standards Commission for Scotland be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed to. That concludes decision time. We now move to members' business. Can members who leave the chamber do so quickly and quietly? The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 13316 in the name of Angus Macdonald on the 10th anniversary of the Gaelic Language Scotland Act 2005. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and members will be aware that there is a Gaelic translation service for this debate as previously intimated by the presiding officer. Headsets have been placed on desks and the service can be found on audio channel 2, member channel 2. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And Mr Macdonald, if you are ready, um, if you would like to open the debate uh, seven minutes or thereby, please. Uh, Moran Tang, Officer, uh, Many Reali, thanks, Prescribing Officer. Glenn, and Coram, Shaw, I am I delighted to have Jespat, the opportunity Horst, to lead Hilmar, this debate in, Parliament, in the debate in the Chamber of the Parliament. Tang, Horst, and I would Gana like Bullen, to thank those Shin, members and, and Yuman, Rish, who and had, added their uh, names Akorika, to the motion Blina, to later celebrate Lin, 10 Jespat, years since the Gaelic Akuma, Language Act to enable this debate to go ahead today. This debate is important as we need to ensure as a parliament and as a government whatever uh, the political parties we belong to that Gaelic uh, continues to be spoken and used in Scotland and that we are planning for a secure future for Gaelic. Unfortunately, I must turn back to English. My excuse is that I am a townie from Stornoway originally, and it is an accepted fact that the Gaelic of Stornoway Coves is not that good. As I've just said, hopefully, uh, this debate is important because we have to ensure as a parliament that a, and a government of whatever political colour uh, that Gaelic continues to be spoken and used in Scotland and that we create a sustainable future for the Gaelic language. So we are here this evening to highlight the good work ongoing to stem the decline in our indigenous and precious language and to celebrate 10 years since the Gaelic Language, Bill, uh, Gaelic, Gaelic language Scotland Bill secured royal assent. Not only did the Act establish Borna Gaelic as uh, the public body responsible for the preservation of Gaelic, but affirmed Gaelic as an official language of Scotland, enjoying equal respect to that of English. Sadly, that equal respect isn't always evident, but I have been impressed by action taken by a number of public bodies and the efforts they've taken to promote Gaelic, a language that's dear to all, or at least most, of our hearts. Uh, now, of course, I've been a strong supporter of Gaelic all my life, uh, with both my grandfather speaking Gaelic and being taught it as early as Primary 1 in Sandwick Hill Primary School, just outside Stornoway. Uh, sadly, it, it hasn't had the desired effect, and to my shame, as a Lyosach, uh, I'm not fluent in the language of my ancestors, although I do hope to sort that uh, at some point in the hopefully not too distant future, although I have to admit I have been promising that for a while. Um, I've been supportive of the language all my political life too uh, and successfully managed to attract the Royal National Mod to Falkirk in 2008 
and as the convener of the local organising committee, I had hoped to leave a lasting legacy for Gaelic and Falkirk District, and I'm glad to say that Falkirk Gaelic Forum has carried that work and vision forward. In Falkirk, for example, the Scottish Government provides a specific grant for Gaelic, and there is an offer from the Scottish Government to discuss the potential of capital for any project support they may identify. Falkirk Council also has actively embraced the Gaelic language in the primary schools GLPS programme. Twenty-five per cent of Falkirk Council primary schools deliver GLPS, eh, and a total of 26 members of staff will have been trained to deliver the GLPS programme by the end of March 2016. And while there is no Gaelic medium education school in Falkirk District, the Council support all applications and provide free transport, allowing pupils to attend GME out with the authority, usually to neighbouring GME schools in Stirling and North Lanarkshire. Falkirk's Gaelic language plan is monitored by the Falkirk Council Officers Group and Falkirk Community Group, with input from Fish 4 and Class and Common, Falkirk Junior Gaelic Choir and Falkirk Gaelic Forum. And the group's track record uh, track the, pro the progress of the plan and suggest the action uh, that is required to, to, to further develop the language. Uh, Falkirk Council is one of 40 public authorities that have had Gaelic plans agreed by Board of Gaelic, and while Falkirk's Gaelic language plan has sadly already missed some of its targets, I'm hopeful it will catch up uh, with a, a, a bit of encouragement from uh, the, the, the forum. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that within the past week or so, a Gaelic development officer has been appointed in a joint project between Falkirk Council and Falkirk Gaelic Forum, which will allow further language and cultural development of Gaelic to be delivered throughout nurseries and schools, deliver staff training, carry out a feasibility study for GME, and create a greater profile of Gaelic within the Falkirk area. So it's an extremely heartening development. So there's plenty of good work going on locally eh, in my area in Falkirk District. Nationally, we're well over halfway through the National Gaelic Language Plan 2012 to 2017, which places strong focus on the role that Gaelic medium education has to play eh, in future years to increase the number of young Gaelic speakers in Scotland to ensure the language has a sustainable and vibrant future. And of course, eh, uh, the use of Gaelic in the home and the community is uh, a strong element of that. The 2011 census figures provided positive news with regard to Gaelic in Scotland. The statistics showed an overall trend where the number of Gaelic speakers had more or less stabilised in comparison with figures for the 2001 uh, census. As the stats show, there are currently 57,000 Gaelic speakers in Scotland, with an excess of 90,000 uh, with some ability of the language. The results also showed that there had been a small increase in the number of people under 20 who could speak Gaelic, with over 14,000 children between the age of 5 and 18 learning the language at different levels across Scotland each week. Now, one aspect of Gaelic which isn't broadcast enough are the economic and social benefits. A recent joint agency research project published last year looked at the ways in which Gaelic is currently being used to deliver economic and social benefits to businesses, social enterprises and communities and how its impact can be maximised. Uh, entitled uh, Our Storis Gaelic, uh, or Our Gaelic Resource, the report demonstrated how the language is currently being used to add value to a wide variety of circumstances and highlights its considerable potential to bring further benefits to businesses, communities and individuals. Almost 70 per cent of businesses consulted said that Gaelic is an asset to their activities. More than half of businesses, uh, 60 per cent, and 85% of community organisations who responded to the survey stated that Gaelic features as a key element of their work. From this result, they calculated that the potential economic value of Gaelic as an asset to the wider Scottish economy could be up to £148.5 million a year. The findings of the research demonstrate emphatically that investment from the Scottish Government to Gaelic translates into significant economic contribution not just in the Highlands and Islands, but also in the central belt of Scotland. Uh, and I think it's worth noting that when the mod was in Falkirk in 2008, it attracted £1.5 million to the local economy, just when the economy was struggling with the economic downturn. And figures for last year's mod uh, show it took in over £3 million to the local economy in Inverness. So previous studies have shown that, relative to its size, the Gaelic community punches well above its weight in its contribution in a range of sectors. Uh, loyalty to language and culture is a powerful, more motivating force, and it's encouraging to see the growing support for Gaelic at grassroots and institutional levels, and the economic as well as social, cultural 
and linguistic benefits that accrue from the concerted action we're seeing developed. With these figures, presiding officer, there is hope for our precious indigenous language, but only if we all work to ensure its survival and growth. I'm committed to playing my part. I hope everyone else is too. Mon Tang. Many thanks. I now call on Michael Russell to be followed by Lewis MacDonald. Four minutes or thereby, please. Um, I Presiding officer, I congratulate Angus MacDonald on securing this debate. I will warmly welcome his chance to contribute and to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Gaelic Language Act. That act was a good step forward. We should not only look back today, but also look ahead as well. Gaelic is in a better condition today than it was before the Act, but more must be done if we are to secure Gaelic for future generations and assert with truth that this is a three-voiced nation as a poem by Ian Crichton Smith asserted at the opening of the Scottish Parliament. Presiding officer, I congratulate Angus MacDonald on securing this debate. I warmly welcome the chance to contribute and to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Gaelic Language Act. The Act was a good step forward, but we should not only look back, but we should also look ahead. Gaelic is in a better condition today than it was before the Act, but more must be done if we are to secure Gaelic for future generations and assert with truth that this is a three-voiced nation, as a poem by Ian Crichton Smith asserted at the opening of this Scottish Parliament. But of course, that's just three voices. English, Gaelic and Scots may be uniquely ours, and I include English presiding officer because T.S. Eliot once contended that the only place that English was spoken properly was Richmond, Virginia and Edinburgh, but there are now other voices to be heard in our land. Our first obligation is to the languages which belong to us. It will be our fault and nobody else's if Gaelic does not survive, and it is possible to countenance such an outcome. Languages do die every year in our world. The present Scottish Government has halted the precipitate decline over the last century, but we are perilously close still to the cliff edge. And it's a cliff edge presiding office of an increasingly elderly population for whom Gaelic is their first language, and a younger population which sometimes does not value what it has inherited. So whilst we should be glad of and celebrate and support all the work that has gone on to get us to the stage, there is much more to do. We need to create a new generation of Gaelic speakers, and our education system will not yet do that. We certainly need more Gaelic medium schools, but we also need a substantial expansion in opportunities for adult learners. And we need to create some places and spaces where Gaelic is not optional or desirable, but essential. Now, there have been ideas of how that might be done over the years, but those proposals now need urgent attention and action. I know the Minister is more than sympathetic to this cause. He is an example to us all, a Gaelic learner who is fluent, a Scots speaker who wrote his thesis in the language. He is truly three-voiced. But he also knows he's the exception. And if we are to grow languages, as the government to its credit is trying to do, then we will need resources and commitment for the long term and for those, the rest of us, who are not exceptions. We also need to move on in legislative terms. My own Gaelic Language Act in 2002, the first Gaelic Language Act, was introduced out of desperation at the failure of the first Scottish Government to honour its promises. It was voted down by that coalition so that it could introduce its own legislation, which to its credit it did in the second term. But that was always seen as a start, not a conclusion. We now need to consider a wider piece of language legislation that encompasses the many voice nation we have become, which also strengthens our commitment to our two indigenous languages and focuses our resources where they are needed most to make Gaelic survive. That's a challenge we should all rise to, perhaps in the next session of the Parliament, because there is still much to be done. Many thanks. I now call on Lewis MacDonald to be followed by Mary Scanlon. Thank you. I congratulate Angus MacDonald on securing this debate. I have the idea that we are both the first people in our own families to speak English as our first language. 
Gavail and Jay Shakin, and that we Akiri, both Jenna want Kinja, to ensure Dunya, that those who Aymri, follow us Chach, will have the ability to speak the Gaelic, Gaelic language. The Gaelic Language Act was brought forward by the Scottish Executive in which I served ten years ago. The land, the language and the people of the Gaeltacht have always mattered a great deal to my party, Scottish Labour, and for me that Act is one of the things we created this Parliament in order to bring about. The Act affirmed Gaelic as an official language of Scotland and created Burna Gaelic to sustain that status for the future. The Board has enjoyed cross-party support throughout these last 10 years and I am confident that will continue in the future. But political goodwill on its own is not enough. For Gaelic to contribute to our future as well as our past will require people to speak it and children to learn it as a first language. It will require visible and audible commitments from public bodies across Scotland to its official status. And it will require Gaelic to continue to, as a language of music and the media, of culture and creativity, as well as of home and school. That is why Gaelic language plans are so important, not just in the Highlands and Islands and the Central Belt, but in the northeast of Scotland too. Aberdeen City Council has been considering its Gaelic language plan today, following the adoption of similar plans by the University of Aberdeen Aberdeenshire Council and the Cairngorms National Park. Though councillors, of course, have to be comfortable with the plan, Scotland's third city must not fall too far behind Glasgow and Edinburgh in providing leadership in delivering public policy on language and culture uh, in our cities with cross-party support. Aberdeen is, after all, the city with the highest proportion of citizens born out with these islands altogether. As a multilingual, multicultural city, Aberdeen should be second to none in recognising and celebrating its own cultural diversity. A good deal is already going on there in schools, as I know from my own family. My daughter Iona sat in her higher Gaelic a few weeks ago, having been taught through the medium of Gaelic at nursery and primary school since the age of two. She has spent most of her 17 years learning and speaking the Gaelic language, and incidentally her skills in the English language are all the better as a result. But Aberdeen, like other places, needs a step change in the scale of Gaelic medium activity in schools, in cultural activities and in language learning. That is why the city's Gaelic language plan needs to be delivered sooner rather than later. It is also important that more is done to enable children and young people to study Gaelic without losing access to other modern languages, not just in Aberdeen but across the country. A bilingual education equips children brilliantly to add further languages as they progress through school. But in practice, many pupils choosing to keep up their Gaelic at secondary school then have little opportunity to learn other modern languages until they reach S6. I hope the Minister can say what more the Government will do to increase the uptake of all modern languages in view of the falls recorded in the last school year at the level of National Fives. So a great deal has been achieved in the last decade since the Act was passed, but there remains a great deal still to do. And like the other speakers, I look forward to an ever higher profile for Gaelic language and culture in Aberdeen and across Scotland in the future. More in time. And many thanks. I now call on Mary Scanlon to be followed by Jean Urquhart. Four minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I join in supporting the motion and its sentiment, and I would like to thank Angus MacDonald for securing this debate and giving us the opportunity uh, to discuss Gaelic. Uh, the collective efforts to ensure the preservation of Gaelic appear to be bearing fruit, but as we will all agree, there is still much more to do. Uh, like others in the Chamber, I remember the passing of the Gaelic Act, and what I remember mostly about it uh, was John Farker Monroe and Alistair Morrison, and uh, I always felt for the two of them, I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn, but English seemed to be a second language. They were very, very familiar uh, with the Gaelic brought up as native Gaelic speakers. Uh, but like Lewis MacDonald and uh, indeed uh, Angus MacDonald, uh, my mother was brought up with English as her second language, uh, being brought up in Ranafast and Dunlow in Donegal, an area familiar to Willie Coffey. And uh, so I am the first in my mother's side of the family uh, to speak English as our first language. But they never called it the Gaelic, they didn't call it the Gaelic, it was indeed Irish. So they spoke, and they still speak, Irish or English. Uh, I welcome the considerable improvements towards reversing 
the decline of the Gaelic language, along with the economic benefits of the culture that uh, so much was said by Angus in his opening uh, statement, uh, but also by, bound by Highlands and Islands Enterprise. It's worth putting on record that, that it's also Borna Gaelic's 10th anniversary as the body responsible for the promotion of the Gaelic culture and language. Uh, Gaelic is an integral part of the history and traditions of the Highlands and Islands, but also across Scotland. Uh, the Scottish Social Attitudes Study found in 2012 that 76 per cent of those surveyed viewed Gaelic as important to our heritage and culture and 81% wish there to be at least as many Gaelic speakers uh, as there is now in 50 years' time. However, only 45% expected this to be the case. So the improvements in Gaelic education and promotion uh, must continue to help confound this fairly pessimistic prediction. Uh, the Conservatives, I think we can all claim success, Labour Lib Dems, the SNP, but the Conservatives uh, also contributed to the Gaelic culture and language uh, for many years during the 90s, establishing the first Gaelic medium uh, unit in a school in Lewis uh, in 86. In fact, the precursor to BBC Alba, Gaelic Television, uh, was established by the Scottish Secretary in 1990, expanded further in 96 to include radio broadcasting. So I think we can all take a bit of credit, but we can also say there's still much more to do. But one of the success stories in Scottish education over the past 30 years has been the expansion of Gaelic education, with the number of children in Gaelic medium education rising from 24 uh, with the establishment of the Gaelic Medium Unit at Breeze Kitchen uh, uh, School in 1986 to over 3,500 last year. Uh, and since the beginning of the National Gaelic Language Plan, we've seen the number of pupils rise by nearly a quarter and the number of pupils in Gaelic learner classes up by 12% since 2001. But just to finish, presiding officer, uh, and I think this is a, 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 I don't mean to be badly political here, but I think it has to be mentioned. The 2011 SNP manifesto stated the intention to examine how we can introduce an entitlement to Gaelic medium education and fair dues. That's exactly what they said. But as a member of the Education Committee, it's worth noting that the upcoming Education Bill does not give an entitlement to Gaelic education, but a fairly lukewarm duty on education authorities to assess the need for Gaelic medium primary education following a parental request and a further duty to actively promote and support Gaelic medium education. So it falls well short of an entitlement. But that said, I very much welcome the progress, I welcome the debate, and I hope for another successful 10 years. So, J.K. Colabri Sona. I think that's happy 10th birthday. <laughs> very good, thank you very much. I'm now calling Jean Arcott to be followed by Dave Thompson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and I too congratulate Angus MacDonald in bringing this important debate to the Chamber. And I'm sorry that I'm unable to speak in one of Scotland's other languages in this debate. Surely there can be little doubt of the value of the Gaelic language, given the number of economic, cultural and, other, and any number of other consultations that were carried out in recent decades, perhaps culminating, we might have hoped, in the Gaelic Language Scotland Act now ten years ago. All that has been achieved has been across all of the political parties and none, and those lobbying for recognition and promotion of the language have done well in achieving that. It seems to me now that we don't need more Gaelic language plans or consultations or more evidence or further justification for language development. We now need to promote the worth of the language as people are establishing here tonight and the opportunities that it provides. That could be opportunities, as Angus MacDonald has already highlighted, in terms of the new Gaelic economy, or opportunities in preschool and primary school education for both children and teachers. When learning a language in school, let's say French, children are never uh, taught only about the country or on a, 
never taught on a word-for-word -word basis, but instead learn about France, the country, its people, history, geography, food, industry, produce, culture. And presiding officer, so it is with Gannick. For many of the children attending primary schools in the Highlands and Islands, the region that I represent, are from across the UK and the rest of Europe. They're putting roots down and learning so much more than just the language. <coughs> and although their granny may be in Manchester or Shetland, they are, through the indigenous language of the Giltacht, Giltacht confidently establishing their roots in the local community. Presiding officer, it used to be in times past that parents talked in Gaelic when they didn't want their children to know what they were talking about. And that's reversed in many households across the Highlands and Islands today, where children talk in Gaelic when they don't know what, when they don't want their parents to know what they're talking about. I do have to mention the lobby against the investment in Gaelic, whether education or road signs, and I believe that it's incumbent on all members of this place to challenge that opposition and to make the positive case that has evolved since the introduction of the Act. But now that we are where we are, I also call on the Gaelic-speaking community to show its appreciation of and support for Scotland's other languages. The Chamber recently was united in welcoming Scotland's culturally diverse communities, but I think we have to show the same commitment in recognising how culturally diverse Scotland herself really is, and to show, to highlight the worth of Scots language, of Lalands, of Doric, of, of, of so-called dialects, although I would argue that these are merely dialects. Anyone speaking in strong Doric or Shetland, or Shetland uh, uh, certainly appears to have a language of their own, and we must celebrate that. And I have sympathy for Angus MacDonald's as yet still unfulfilled ambition to become fluent in the Gaelic language, and I have promised myself on several occasions to do the same. But finally, presiding officer, I would uh, like to, and Mary uh, has already highlighted uh, the, the difference between the SNP, uh, the Scottish National Party Manifesto. I stood on the manifesto uh, in 2011, which did say that we would export, uh, support expansion of Gaelic medium education, and I quote, where reasonable demand exists. And the 2007 manifesto, which said, we will guarantee in law the right to Gaelic medium education. Now, there may be practical reasons for that change, but I would ask the Minister and the Scottish Government to review uh, that difference and to show and continue to show, as they have done, that Scotland must, needs and must, recognise the worth of the Gaelic language for all of these reasons. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And thank you. And I now call on Dave Thompson to be followed by John Finney. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Congratulations to Angus MacDonald for bringing this motion before Parliament. And I am happy that we marked 10 years since the Gaelic Language Act was enacted. <laughs> We should consider the effect of the Gaelic Act with pride, but with an eye also to that which still needs to be done to strengthen the place of Gaelic. The Act gave us the basis for promoting Gaelic on the basis of equal respect with English. It gave us born Gaelic with a duty to prepare a National Gaelic Language Plan that would establish a way forward for the language. The board, the board has the ability to ask public bodies to deliver Gaelic language plans. Many beneficials, beneficial things have happened as a result of it. The language is more visible. The Gaelic arts have been promoted by Creative Scotland. The number of adults learning the language has increased. 
Bui er policy and and real. The Gaelic Act has influenced the government's policies. Er take a humble re BBC the Scottish Alaba. government has supported Kedaha BBC Alaba, even although broadcasting is reserved to the Westminster Parliament. Er a strategy for Gaelic education resulted a from the Gaelic Act. Er er the number of pupils in Gaelic media education has increased and there is support from this government for standalone Gaelic schools. We should be hopeful for the future following the results of the last census. And we will have an additional opportunity to strengthen the spirit of the Gaelic Act through the Education Scotland Bill. Mindful of the evidence that has been forthcoming in submissions to the committee, it is clear that some of those knowledgeable on Gaelic matters are of the opinion that this bill does not go far enough. Some are of the view that there must be a legal right to Gaelic education when reasonable demand has been demonstrated, as well as statutory guidance if Gaelic education is to be strengthened and expanded. This would be in line with promises made, and we should strive to fulfill those promises. I hope that the Education Committee will carefully note the views that have come forward, and that the Minister would be willing to consider amendments to the Bill that would ensure parental demand for Gaelic education is delivered. Now is not the time for our debate on this matter, but it is not often legislation is prepared that could help strengthen Gaelic. In the final analysis, this new bill gives us an opportunity to have a positive influence on the way in which we are delivering the aspirations of the Gaelic Act. Finally, presiding officer, it would be appropriate to thank all those who diligently promote and develop Gaelic, those who teach it and those who use it in their daily work and in their communities. Many thanks. And I now call on John Finney, after which we move the closing speech from the Minister, Dr. Alistair Helm. Uh, Thank you, Presiding Officer. I want to congratulate Angus MacDonald for his work and for this motion. It is very important. I would also like to congratulate Borna Gaelic. Uh, uh, and all the other Gaelic uh, organisations uh, and Gaelic workers for all their work. Uh, crow er son a I know everyone is very busy and working for the language. Uh, I am not uh, a native uh, Gaelic speaker, uh, but uh, I am learning uh, every day. Uh, my daughter is fluent da and my Eike, two da kutsch, teenage granddaughters are uh, fluent as well. Uh, er, uh, ar uh, Gala, I Glasgow, have a granddaughter uh, at and Mac Nick, Glasgow High School a and a grandson who goes to the nursery in Edinburgh. Um, I think many more families are like this now and we must all feel positive about the years ahead. When I was a councillor in, in, in Inverness, Bunskol Gaelic in Inverness was in my ward. It was Scotland's first purpose-built Gaelic school. Bunskol Gaelic in Inverness is bigger now. And 
we need north places as our schools are very busy. This is good news. Likewise, I'm pleased that Sol Morostik has many students from many countries and is an international success. It's a so the sky and the surrounding area of the south of Sky has flourished because of the Gaelic language. As the motion says, the Gaelic is an economic success, a near 150 million for centuries, uh, culture was not allowed to flourish. Now, because of our beautiful Gaelic music, our many great singers, Gaelic is known and loved in many countries. However, not everything is good. Some things are like the number of subjects at our high school could be better. But as the minister knows, that applies to English language schools too. So we must use flexibility and technology to get the number of pupils needed for any class, whether in Gaelic or English, to be a success. Opportunities for adult learners to be better too. But if we look over the last 10 years, then there has been progress and much good work. I want to say something about another language, the Scots language. I want to see the respect that is now given to Gaelic given to Scots as well. Scotland is a modern nation which must respect our past, our history. I'm happy to be able to speak a little in Gaelic in our nation's parliament again. We must, as we say, be able to normalise the language speaking Gaelic in the parliament. Thank you again. Thank you very much. And we now move the closing speech from the Minister, Dr Alistair Allen. Uh, Minister, you have seven minutes or thereby. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It is a pleasure for me to have the Scottish Parliament recognise the anniversary of this important legislation for the Gaelic language and for Scotland. Congratulations to Angus MacDonald for leading this debate, and I'm glad that uh, progress is being made in Falkirk from the language as well. I have listened intently to the comments made by all those who have contributed to this interesting debate. I'm pleased to see that Gaelic continues to have cross-party support in the chamber. Indeed, it was, as uh, Angus McDonald said, it was the Labour Pen government that brought the 2005 Act through Parliament, and Mary Scanlon was correct that growth in Gaelic broadcasting TV uh, began under the so I have uh, the of the Tory government. So we should continue to work together to ensure a bright and sustainable future for the language. Our minority and indigenous language are important to us, and I'm thinking about Scots. It's correct to talk about Scots as well. 
I'm sure that many of the public don't realize that there are 10 indigenous languages spoken today in the British Isles and believe that we are a nation of one of those. This is far from the case. People in the length of the breadth of these islands are using indigenous languages other than English to communicate with friends, families, families, Teachers, colleagues, and public services. Work, that they are in the minority doesn't mean that they don't exist. The good news is that it is difficult for people in Scotland to ignore our languages. It is all around us, and at some stage in Scotland, we'll have to notice it. It's in our song, in our poetry, in our politics. Of place names in our politics. In fact, I suspect that in what is supposed to be an increasingly monoglot 21st century, that there are actually more opportunities to see, hear, and read about our languages now in Scotland than ever before. It is an undeniable element in our heritage. And it is right that our language should be seen and heard. So, how after Gaelic Alpha David the Cold, the Cultural Act 2005 has been important for Gaelic for a number of reasons. Firstly, the legislation gave us the importance of equal respect for the English language, and this should not be forgotten. It made Gaelic a national language in Scotland. Uh, an important uh, statement of past and future uh, identity uh, of our country. And the the legislation also gave us the first statutory body with the function to support uh, and develop the Gaelic, Gaelic language Gaelic. 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 that the legislation gave to the board to uh, ask public bodies to prepare Gaelic language and uh, equally important in health in Scottish public life focus on how to support the language. Jean spoke about the negativity in some quarters. Gaelic language plans have been important in getting it. Uh, to where, to where we are today. Without these plans, we would not have seen the same level of awareness of the language, nor would we have the level of operations and services through the medium of Gaelic that these public bodies provide. In the case of local authorities' plans, we would not have seen such progress in supporting the development and growth of so, I really education at our uh, so, uh, there has been a great deal of progress Gaelic, in the support of ga Gaelic in recent uh, years, from arts, from broadcasting culture to education, from the media and broadcasting areas. We have seen good Gaelic broadcasts. We have seen the success of MGLP, working in partnership with the BBC. This partnership has achieved much in a short time and has enriched the broadcasting Broadcasting landscape in Scotland. With BBC Alpe now, the activities have helped support the economy with £9.1 million going directly to local companies and the production of programming and education. We have seen good growth in the number of pupils entering primary one from 386 in 2007 to 556 in 2014. With support from the Gaelic Schools Capital Fund, we have witnessed the expansion of Gaelic medium education across Scotland as Gaelic schools and units open or expand, including Aberfeldy, Bowmoor, Cumbernauld, Glasgow, Fort William, Glenarchet, Inverness, Irvine, Kilmarnock, Kilmarnock, uh, and and Portree. Education is key to the future of the language. Without it, we will not see the numbers coming through that can legitimately secure the future of Gaelic. Uh, Actually, one or two points raised by members about the education bill going through Parliament 
I'm very happy to meet with these members about the points they made, and I'm most willing to listen to any points made about that bill and its development. I'm just coming um, to a conclusion. I think I've... Just if you wish to take an intervention... I'll take an intervention in that case. Ms. Cameron. Yes, I am a member of the Education Committee, and I would very much welcome if the Minister would take an opportunity to explain why an entitlement to Gaelic education promised in the SNP manifesto has now become an explanation of the administrative process used for a parental request for Gaelic. Well, I will say that obviously the, the process is important because one of the things that's arisen over many years has been a, a, a question as to how parents in a situation where perhaps uh, the community wishes to see a Gaelic unit but the local authority doesn't, how they pursue that. Uh, and certainly I believe that it's, it's a real step forward that we now have a bill which establishes a process, establishes evidence, and I would think in many cases that will be quite incontrovertible evidence in many cases about the demand that exists uh, for Gallic medium education within a community. But I am, as I mentioned, more than happy to meet the member uh, and to, to talk about any ideas she has for uh, improvements to the bill. Obga really hashin uh we are aware uh, that there are difficulties and there is much still of, to be uh, done to secure the, the future of Gaelic. Gaelic. As Mike Russell said, it's not good enough that Gaelic is still here. It needs to be used. In any education system, there needs to be the, the best teaching staff and resources to help it succeed. We are all too aware of the necessity to grow teacher numbers in Gaelic education. This remains a hurdle to expansion. And in some cases, to the status quo. It is essential that those who wish to teach in Gaelic education are afforded the opportunity to do so. Therefore, we need to increase the roots into training. That is why we are committed to continuing our work with the board, or universities, local authorities, and others to ensure opportunities into education at all levels are supported and resourced to meet the needs of all those involved. We also need to work with Gaelic communities across Scotland to ensure that the language is used in everyday life. I witnessed in my own community Gaelic speakers refusing to speak in Gaelic to children who are learning the language. We must work at getting to the root of why this is. Really, here, Deciding Gaelic officer, Jews, we can now celebrate Gaelic Everett from education uh, to rally, the schools to signage and railway stations to vibrant film the awards. We ha now have uh, a thriving Gaelic, Gaelic media industry here in Scotland for young Gaelic speakers. This is a different world. Gaelic still has its challenges, but we have moved on in the past 10 years, but there is still much for us to do. There's a lot still to be done in future years, as members have said, but there's an opportunity to congratulate everybody who strove for the success of the language. Thank you. Many thanks. Uh, and I thank you all for taking part in this important debate. And I close this meeting of Parliament.